Hello you beautiful PPU, this is Chris from TechSpurt and I'm out here in Bonny Munich where Huawei has finally unveiled the Mate 30 and Mate 30 Pro premium flagship handsets. Now these two are absolutely stunning, both very very premium in terms of the specs, the design and everything, but there are significant differences between them as well. So what actually are those differences and which one might be best for you? Here's my full in-depth comparison. And for more than the latest greatest mobile tech, please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers! Now first up, the Mate 30 and the Mate 30 Pro are a similar sort of size. They both sport a nice bit of curved glass around the back, but around front they are different. Huawei's Horizon display on the Pro model curves around the edges of the phone almost a full 90 degrees, whereas you get side bezels there on the standard model, it's a much more flat screen. Around back, they look pretty similar at a first glance. You get this halo ring design. The camera grille is almost flush with the back of the phone. It does jut out a little bit, unfortunately. The shape and the position of it kind of reminds me of the old Lumia 1020s, which I absolutely adored, so that's good. You've got a few different finishes here from full-on glossy glass to a nice bit of vegan-friendly leather action as well, which are more durable and kind of look and feel nice. And the green Pro model also sports a very funky gloss to matte gradient finish. So the bit that you hold actually feels a bit rougher, has that sort of matte texture, it doesn't get all smudgy and it gives a nice bit of anti-slip resistance as well. The Mate 30 Pro is also IP68 water and dust resistant, while the standard Mate 30 is only IP53, so don't go getting it too moist. As I mentioned before, the Mate 30 Pro has an absolutely stunning curved screen. Curves almost a full 90 degrees around the edges. And both the Mate 30 and the Mate 30 Pro have a very chunky notch up top as well, although it's a bit slimmer on the Mate 30 as it just has a selfie camera. On the Mate 30 Pro, it's a bit more complex. And this includes a selfie camera, a 3D depth camera, an ambient light sensor, and a new gesture sensor as well. You can actually scroll up and down through your websites by literally waving your hand about and take a screen grab by literally grabbing at the air, if that's your bag. More excitingly, the auto screen rotation is actually based on eye tracking right now on the Mate 30 and the Mate 30 Pro instead of just using the internal phone sensors. So if it detects that you're looking at the screen in a horizontal fashion, then that's exactly what will happen. No more annoying auto screen rotating while you're lying in bed when you don't want it to. Now as for that display, the Mate 30 Pro sports a 6.53 inch OLED panel, whereas the Mate 30 is a bit bigger at 6.62 inches, still an OLED screen. The Mate 30 Pro has a slightly stronger resolution, 2400 by 1176 compared with the Mate 30, which is 2340 by 1080. The aspect ratio is also different as well. The Mate 30 Pro, it's an 18.4 by 9, whereas it's a more stretched 19.5 by 9 on the Mate 30. Both phones support DCI-P3 HDR, and also they've got that anti-blue light filter as well for an easier on the eye experience. Apparently that's stronger on the Mate 30. Now up top on the Mate 30, you'll also spy a proper earpiece, whereas that's missing on the Mate 30 Pro, just like the P30 Pro before, it uses that acoustic vibration for when you actually in a call. The Mate 30 has that earpiece, but it still has a mono speaker output for media, unfortunately, with all of the sound blasted out of that bottom firing speaker. And while the standard Mate 30 has a volume key as usual, on the Pro that's actually missing because of that curvature. Instead, what you need to do is double tap the edge of the Mate 30 Pro, and then this will pop up the volume levels, and then you just slide your finger up and down that edge in order to change it. It actually works surprisingly well. It's much better than the likes of Sony SideSense. And a similar sort of method is used for taking selfies as well, using that front facing camera you've got a little virtual button which can be moved up and down the side of the screen to suit your own particular finger size I guess. Now of course one of the more intriguing aspects of the Mate 30 handsets before launch was what software were they going to come packing and the answer is Android 10 with a bit of a Motion UI 10 launch action smothered lovingly on top. This adds all of the features that I already covered in my full in-depth Amui 10 launch guide including the new dark mode which looks very snazzy, a customizable always on display with your choice of clock faces you've got a good selection in there very cool indeed and it's basically a fresh new UI design with smoother smart animations it looks really nice I like the magazine style layout of a lot of the menus very cool there is of course a strong emphasis on security both the Mate 30 and the Mate 30 Pro support an in-screen fingerprint sensor and also a bit of face recognition as well and there's also the new AI private view as well and this basically detects for another person is squinting at your messages on the lock screen while you're looking at it and then just covers up all of the information keeping your privates private now both the Mate 30 and the Mate 30 Pro are powered by the Kirin 990 system on a chip, Huawei's latest flagship platform. Super, super nippy, so definitely a contender for one of the most powerful processors out there right now. You get 8 gigs of RAM stuffed inside, as well as 128 gigabytes of storage for all of your files. You do get a choice of 4G or 5G on both the Mate 30 and the Mate 30 Pro as well. The 5G models will have that modem built right into the chipset, which is quite a unique feature of the Kirin 990. You get a mighty 21 antennas built into these phones, 14 dedicated to the 5G connectivity on those handsets. Uh, 
Uh, so eight separate bands are supported for 5G, the most than any smartphone to date. And both phones support dual SIM as well, one 5G card and one 4G card, or you can sub that second SIM for one of Huawei's proprietary memory cards. As for the battery life, it's a 4,500 milliamp cell in the Mate 30 Pro, nice and big, 4,200 milliamp in the Mate 30, so not far behind. You get full 40 watt supercharge support and 27 watt wireless charging support on both phones as well. And of course, there is a bit of reverse wireless charging as usual. And what about that camera tech? Well, on the Mate 30, you get a triple lens setup. It's a 40 megapixel f1.8 primary lens with a super large RYYB sensor capable of sucking in lots of light. Your ISO level goes all the way up to over 200,000 max. And it's capable of impressively sharp macro shots as well, thanks to the sensor tech and the laser focus. This is backed up by a 16 megapixel ultra wide f2.2 lens and an 8 megapixel telephoto f2.4 lens, this one with optical image stabilization built in. That gives you up to three times optical zoom and 30 times digital zoom. It is a very different setup on the Mate 30 Pro, though here you get a quad lens setup. The main camera is a new super sensing wide 40 megapixel primary effort with an f1.6 aperture and like same RYYB sensor as the standard Mate with a bit of OIS as well. This is backed by a 40 megapixel secondary camera. This is an ultra wide cine camera as well we terms it with f1.8 aperture and an RGGB sensor. And last up is another telephoto 8 megapixel effort. This one it's f1.4 apparently according to the specs. That's got optical image stabilization built in again and once again you can do up to three times optical zoom 30 times digital and finishing off the mate 30 pro camera specs you also get a 3d depth sensor so all well and good but what does that actually mean for the camera performance well the mate 30 pro can shoot up to 4k 60 frames per second video footage whereas the standard mate 30 can only shoot 4k at up to 30 frames per second the pro model can shoot ultra low light video with an iso level of 51,000. that's an option you don't get on the standard mate 30. we've also got a nice bit of 4k hdr plus time lapse footage action on the mate 30 pro there's a real-time bokeh option the mate 30 pro can also shoot ultra slow motion footage at 7680 frames per second that's 256 times slower than real life the standard mate 30 isn't quite that strong it tops out at 32 times slower performance still pretty good and on both those options uh, the resolution is at 720p apart from that though the mate 30 and the mate 30 pro are pretty close when it comes to the photo quality you've got the same selection of options right there the portrait mode the night mode all that kind of shenanigans so all the usual Huawei stuff that you would expect I will of course do a full in-depth comparison between the two for the camera tech when I finally get my hands on both of these handsets and that right there in a nutshell is how the Mate 30 and the Mate 30 Pro stack up the Mate 30 is of course cheaper at 799 euros whereas the Mate 30 Pro starts at 1099 euros so are you tempted by the Mate 30 or the Mate 30 Pro or perhaps neither definitely let me know which one is your huckleberry down in the comments below and thanks for watching everyone please do pop subscribe and ding that notifications bell